Welcome to another Tech Help Question brought to you by ASP Learning Zone. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. It's been a while since I've done an ASP tip. And in today's lesson, I'm going to show you how to prove that you're human. A quick way to foil spam bots on your website with a simple math question. Today's question comes from Max, who's taken my ASP classes. And he says he set up a basic form on his website to capture user signups. First name, last name, email address, and so on. Every day lately, it seems like I get dozens, if not hundreds, of fake submissions from what seems to be a bot. The names are all gibberish, and the email addresses are all bogus, at gmail.com addresses. I feel you. I used to get tons of those, too. It seems every time I put a new form on my website, if I don't put the solution I'm going to show you right now on it, I get, I get all kinds of spam bots hitting it. I don't know why people feel the need to do this. There's nothing they can gain from it except annoying me. But anyways, he continues to say... I really don't like CAPTCHA. I'd rather have my own custom solution without using third-party servers. CAPTCHA is actually really easy to set up on your website. I, I played with this once myself. Um, it's only two lines of code, but it does rely on another company's servers. So if you want to keep everything in-house, then you can build your own solution. He says, is there a quick solution you've got to deal with this? It doesn't have to be perfect. Just cut down on these damn bots. Sincerely, Max. Yeah, we can do it relatively easily with only a couple of lines of code. And I like to do a simple math question. Most people can you know, answer a simple math question like what is four plus three? And it's not very invasive at all. And I'll show you a quick way that you can, you know, once they enter that, mark them as logged on so that they don't have to keep entering it. Okay, so I've got a basic form set up on my website. And yes, I'm using an older version of Internet Explorer for class. I use Google Chrome myself, but I don't want you seeing all my toolbars and icons and everything I got set up. So here's an old copy of Internet Explorer, which works just fine. And in this form, real simple, I could put Richard and Rost and then hit submit. And the process page just says, hello, Richard Rost. This is obviously where you would then submit this information to your, your web server to store in your table, your database, whatever. I cover all this stuff in my classes. All right, so let's take a look at the ASP and the pages real quick. Okay, here's my default page, my form page, form method post. And I've cut out all the extraneous HTML. We don't need to see headers and titles and all that stuff. All right, form post method, right? And then action is process.asp. That's what page we're sending it to. Again, I cover this in my classes. First name field, last name field, and an input type. That's our input button, our submit button. That sends it to process.asp, which is this page. And literally all I'm doing is I'm requesting first name, requesting last name, and then displaying it with a response.write. Very simple ASP. Yes, yes, I know. I can use request.form here to limit it so that it only it only receives submission from a form. But I like to do it this way sometimes because this way you can also send it from a query string. You could put, you know, first name equals something on the query string. If you really want to cut down on bots though, you know, they'll get around it. They'll still they'll still figure out how to do it with as a form submission. All right, but it, this is easier for now. So the first thing you can do is just verify that the data that is submitted to you is valid. All right, that's one thing you could do. So you can say here something along the lines of if first name is blank, then, you know, whatever you, whatever you want to do. You can just response an error, right? Response, I can't type today. Response.write, missing first name, like that, and then response.end. And do the same thing with last name. So that's the, the first way to foil bots is to just make sure the data is valid. Right, missing last name. Save that. And now if I go back to my web browser here, back it up. All right, if I'm missing either one of these things, all right, missing first name. You know, things like credit card number. You can check the length of the credit card number. You can check to make sure the first digits are three, four, or five, or six. You can do a LUN check. There's all kinds of things you can do. And I'm going to cover these in one of my upcoming access classes, by the way. When I get around to it, I'll put it in an ASP class, too. But there's a lot of things you can do just to verify that the data that is actually entered is correct. But the next thing we can do is actually throw a math question on this form. So let me switch over here to design view. Let me slide this up so you can see the tabs on the bottom. I'm using Expression Web, by the way, which is the new replacement for front page. I know last time I used, uh, I, the last time I recorded an ASP class, I was still using front page. And I just did a quick look up in my course database. 2008 was the last time I did an ASP class. It was ASP 304. 2008, so it's been 12 years. Wow, I feel old now. Anyways, let's put a math question on here. 
So let's put a math question on the form. Just a simple, you know, what is eight plus two kind of question. So let's generate two random numbers first. Let's put some ASP up top here on the top of our form. Now I cover random numbers in my ASP 103 class. So the first thing we have to do is randomize the number seed that just scrambles all the numbers up in the computer's memory. Basically, there's more to it than that. but. And we're going to make two session variables called math1 and math2. So math1 is going to be equal to int of rnd times 10. What that does is that'll give me a random number between 0 and 9. That's how that works. It's this minus 1. All right, so between 0 and 9, which is exactly what we want. Same thing with math2. And you can make these as complicated as you want. I'm going to keep them simple. This is just to throw the bots off. Math2 is the same thing. Why are we assigning them to session variables? Well, I want them to stay in the computer's memory. Because we're going to, in a minute, pass to another page. And I'm going to need to know what those are. I don't want to put them in the form. Because I don't want the bot to understand what they are. But I want to save them in the computer's memory. Yeah, if someone really wants to go through the hassle of actually programming something to read this page and pull those numbers in and then calculate the math on their own, okay, great, you could do that. Um, but this, again, will foil most basic attempts. Another option, if you want to get fancy, instead of displaying the numbers as text, you could display them as pictures. Make up little pictures of the numbers and then just display that image, which actually isn't a bad idea. Maybe I'll throw that on the end of the lesson here, but let's do this first with just the text. So let's get rid of that stuff there and let's put our little math question right in here and just say what is and then we're going to put in here equals session math1 and then a little plus sign and then the same thing with math2. I'm just going to copy and paste. All right, change that to a 2. Save it real quick, and if I come back and refresh my browser, you can see there I got 8 plus 9. If we hit refresh again, we keep getting random numbers just like that. 0 plus 3, 5 plus 0, 6 plus 2, and so on. All right, and right here we can throw our little input box like that. And I'll call this guy math, or you can call it answer or whatever you want to call it. All right, save it. Check out our form. All right, what is one plus two? And you can make this pretty. My goal here isn't to make it pretty. My goal is to show you how it works. Obviously, I'd throw this in some kind of a form and set the fonts and all that good stuff, but for, for today's lesson, this is fine. So now I've got my math one, math two. I've got those set in session variables so I can access them on the next form, on the next page. All right, let's go over to the process page over here and let's get math. So we're gonna say in this on this page here, the math equals request math and again we can check it to make sure that there's something entered All right if math equals blank then we could say missing answer to math question so now if I test it come over here and leave this blank I get missing answer to math question perfect now we can actually test and see if it's correct, if the answer provided is correct. Now keep in mind, all of my variables right now are string variables. Math and Math1 and Math2 are all stored as string variables. So we have to convert them over to integer or long, whichever you prefer. I usually use long because it works in every case. So I'm going to say if CLNG, convert to long, math is not equal to, now remember Math1 and Math2 are stored in session variables. So it's CLNG session Math1 plus, same thing with math2, just copy and paste that. Copy, paste, math2, right? If, if this variable that I entered isn't the same as this plus this, then we'll write out some error message, all right? Incorrect math answer, or whatever you wanna put in there. Um, I like to put some kind of a message in there that's generic, that doesn't hint to the uh, the bot spam people that they that they need to work on their bot. You know, I'll put something like you know error processing order contact customer service or something along those lines. I don't like to tip my hand. 
All right, now let's go test it. All right, Richard Rost, and that should be 15. Actually, let's put a wrong value in there first. Let's put 19 in there. Incorrect math answer. All right, back it up. Let's put the right one in there, 15. Submit. And there we go. Hello, Richard Rost. And, of course, now down here at this point in the code, this is where you will put in the... Uh, you know the processing it, the sending it to your form, whatever you want to do, save it in your database. Okay, we've 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 gotten you know success at this point. All right, I mentioned an option before. Instead of putting the numbers in here, because you could probably with if you're a spammer, you could probably with minimal coding write something to just look for those numbers and put them in with your bot. It would be a little harder if we could display those numbers as. Uh, as as images, so I'm just gonna load up trusty MS Paint. Right, comes with Windows. I love Paint. It's nice. It's simple. It's easy. All right. Let's use our text tool, which is right there on the home menu. All right. Put a number one in there. Maybe slide that up like so. Resize this like that. Maybe make these numbers bigger. That's kind of small. Let's make it bigger. Let me get rid of. That. Let me cut that out. Get rid of that. Let's go text. All right, let's go on the text thing here. Let's go maybe 18 points. Okay, let's do a different font too. Let's use, uh, uh, you can make it obscured. You can do whatever you want. Let's go with Courier. Courier's a nice computer -y font. There's number one. All right, and we'll just shrink this down to be as big or as small as we want it to be. Do a little bit of this. There's my one. You can put a border around it. You can do whatever you want. Save it, Control S. All right, I'm just going to save this as you can save it as a PNG or a GIF or a JPEG, whatever. All right, I'm going to make this one dot JPEG. Save that. All right, and then we'll just have to copy these up to the server. All right, so let's change this now. Let's make this a two. Whoops, I forgot with with uh, with paint you're going to have to delete the old ones because once you drop it on the, the canvas there, it becomes an image. All right, so we have to select and delete it like that. And then make it the next one, like so. Put a two in there. All right, and then center it by selecting it and then dragging it like that. All right, save this one, file, save as, to that JPEG, and so on. I'm not gonna make you watch me do all of them. I'll do all, all 10 of them right now real quick. Okay, so I've got all my images 0 through 9 made. I'm going to create a new folder inside of my test folder here for class. All right, new folder. I'll call this images. Now I'll go into that images folder. Go over to the desktop folder where I created all these images. Select them. Click and drag and drop them in here. Front page or expression web or whatever you're using will FTP them up to the server. It only take a second. There they all are. Now let's go back to default here, and instead of writing that out, we're going to drop an image in here with that as the file name. So it's going to be tag image img source equals, and then it's going to be inside of quotes, there's your variable dot jpg. That's all you have to do to put that in there as one dot jpeg, three dot jpeg, whatever. All right, same on the other side. Copy, paste it there. And then I'm lazy. I copy and paste everything. And right there. Okay. Save that. Let's take a look at it. Let's go over to our browser. Refresh the page. And oh, oh, oh I forgot. They're in the images folder. All right. That is just one.jpg. We have to put in here images. My bad. My mistake. Forgot that little bit. All right. Images. And images. All right. Save it again. See, even I make little goofs from time to time. Refresh, there we go, four plus three. And you can take your time and make this all line up properly, right? You get it, there's, there's, there's images right there. See those images, right? You make them, make them fit nice. Spend some time on it, make it look pretty. Now, could a spammer defeat this too? Yeah, sure they could. They could read the HTML of the page and find out the name of the final name. I mean, there's, there's, no matter what you do, there's always a way around it, right? Someone else could figure something out. You could name these files randomly if you wanted to. Instead of it being 1.jpg, it could be like snowbird.jpg or something. 
right? The spammers are usually just one step behind the developers. So this will foil most people. You want to just make it difficult for them to try and figure it out. And, and th this is good enough for most websites. We're not, you know, we're not uh, building a site for the Pentagon here. So that's it. That's it in a nutshell. That's how to handle putting a simple little math question on your forums to defeat those spam bots. Okay, one last note. I, uh, I'm going to leave this up on the website for you if you want to grab my little images and use them on your own site uh, or just make your own. I moved it to this folder, though. It's 599cd.com slash ASP slash course slash math. That's where you can find these files. Of course, you won't be able to download the ASP and the and the uh, the default because the my server will render them, but you can play with them if you want to. But if you want to grab the images, they're in the images folder. Okay, that's all for this lesson, folks. I hope you learned something. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. If you enjoyed this lesson and you're watching me on YouTube, make sure you subscribe to my channel and ring that bell to get notifications whenever I release something new. If you're watching on my website, make sure you visit the Active Server Pages forum under the forums section and hit the subscribe button there. You'll get email notifications every time I release a new video. Got a question you'd like to see answered? Well, drop it on my tech help page or post it in the forums or put it in the comments below. And if I like it, maybe I'll make a tech help video about it. And of course, if you like my videos, you can watch my full ASP level one course on my website. Absolutely free of charge. There's the link. And if you like level one, well, level two is just $1. It's a great deal. Whole hour long classes here, folks. Okay, thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed. We'll see you next time.